We've got another tier list. This one's going to be a little bit different than the previous ones where we focused on products. This one, we're going to be looking at brands. So we've got 15 really popular brands in the office chair space. And we're just going to kind of go through them, looking at things like price to value proposition, policies, returns, warranty, their reputation, and just give you a nice ranking so you can kind of see our thoughts on these different brands. Let's go. We're starting with Ikea first. What are we thinking on Ikea? Well, I mean, I think Ikea is a fairly well-known brand. They've got a nice return policy, 365 days. You got the opportunity to return stuff in store without having any fees associated with it. Their warranties are pretty consistent. Product is pretty middle of the road. Yeah. Any lower tier, middle of the road. It's kind of like opposite ends of the spectrum, right? Because you're getting some of the best policies in the industry. They definitely have the best return policy. And their 10-year warranty that covers, I believe, everything is about as close as you're going to get to the best brands out there. So from a policy standpoint and being able to walk into any IKEA, which are spread around the country and try the chairs is another bonus. They have a good reputation for upholding their policies, but the products are kind of opposite where they're pretty low end and definitely going to be better picks for a price point, usually under two or 300 bucks. So for me, if we were just looking at the product quality, it would probably be somewhere around D. Some of them may be creeping into the F area, but they have such amazing policies that I would have to bring this up a bit and probably put it somewhere in the C range. Yeah, I mean, I think that's probably pretty fair. That one year return policy is really awesome and the fact that you can just take it back to a store which is going to be pretty close to most people and by pretty close i mean it's like us we're within two and a half hours of really an ikea both directions so robert you're in a couple chairs right now we've got the jar fillet and then we've got the marcus chair which we've had for a while now what do you think from an ikea standpoint where would you rank them I mean, they definitely kind of set them apart, set themselves apart with a little bit more of a unique looks, you know, like they, you can kind of see these Ikea chairs look a little bit similar, even though they have a little different uh, features and stuff. I personally wouldn't choose any of their products to sit in, which drops it into probably a D for me. But again, with taking into account some of the other things, maybe it gets up to a C of policies and availability. Just being able to go to a store and buy one is really nice. I agree. I wouldn't sit in any of those chairs either. And we went into the store and sat in a lot of their chairs and we they're did. horrible. So Ikea brand is a C minus for me, maybe a D plus, but I'm gonna go C minus just because they stand behind their stuff and you can return it. So for yeah. a year. So we've got a D, C minus and a C. So we've got steel case. Steel case is going to be a tough one here for the audience because we got a split audience with quite a few people in Europe. I know from the U.S. standpoint and a lot of other areas, this is going to rank pretty high, but I think the people in Europe probably have a different opinion. It's just got to get knocked down a little peg just because the five-year warranty for, what is it, U.K. and Ireland? How does excluded. that work? Well, it's ex- they're excluded, so it's the EMEA. EMEA excluding UK. Right. Okay, so everyone and else only has a five-year warranty. Correct. Whereas everyone else in the world gets a full 12-year warranty, which right. is a pretty big, big di- difference. It's yeah. a big reason why you get into these high-end chairs is for that 12-year guarantee. Not getting seven of it definitely has to knock it down a peg. The thing for me with the steel case stuff is that, I mean, I would pretty much automatically throw them up in an A tier right away just because of the fact that they're making some of the best quality stuff. I mean, we do refurbishing here. We have got chairs that are coming in that are various ages. We've had Leap V1s that have come in that are from 19, what is it, 98? Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. And they are really good. I mean, they're just such a well-built chair. So looking at a product, I'd say A tier. When we look at the warranty stuff, A tier marginally maybe S tier, but the fact that they've got the EMEA thing, I can't really necessarily go S tier. The reason I wouldn't go S tier is just because there's another brand on this list or in existence that I think makes a slightly better product, has a slightly better warranty. And I'm also not a huge fan of Steelcase's customer service right now when you use their store. They're not super responsive, and that's probably due to them not having a ton of experience going direct to market like that. But it is a drawback, and it's something that we evaluate. And so for me, they would just come back down to the A tier, which is going to be a, I mean, it's still going to be a top placement, but just not quite enough to get to that S tier. Yeah, I mean, we love their products. There's so many here. Like, I didn't know which chair to sit in first. I love so many of these chairs, so... Comfort wise, durability, like they have a lot going for them. And there's also a lot of variety, like so that some are better for, uh, you know, different shapes, sizes, people. So it's a, it's a brand where I think it's going to be pretty easy for almost anyone to find a chair that they love in the Steelcase lineup. So I think if Steelcase, which I know you're, 
I know you're watching. If you made the Lamia chair, we'd probably consider putting you S tier. However, you haven't, so we're going to go A tier. And to back up our EMEA watchers, get them the real warranty. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's ridiculous. We have no idea why they're doing this, but it's... <laughs> we're trying to find out. Yeah. We can't. Yes. Next up, we've got Branch. Got three of their chairs here. The Ergonomic Task and Daily. This is definitely going to be a lower price brand. I think their highest price chair is still... Only 329 bucks. Well, the Verve chair now is up oh. there. It's like 600 bucks. Okay, we don't have that one. But based on our experience with these three chairs, it, they're not the highest-end products. From a product standpoint, they'd probably be somewhere around a D, and I don't know how attractive their policies are either. Yeah, I mean, their policies are just sort of okay, and they kind of vary depending on the product. So, like, their higher-end tier stuff, so, like, the ergonomic chair and the Verve is seven years for warranty on parts, and then I think three years on, like, foam upholstery. When you get into the lesser expensive stuff, it drops down to, I believe, it's five years. And then just looking at their return policy, anything that's not free returns from brands like this is it's kind of surprising, I think, right now. I think you would expect it to be... And so they don't have restocking fees, but they do charge return shipping. So that's tough. I, I would say from the quality of the product, which is eh, just okay, to the policies, which, again, are about the same, probably put them in a D tier. I don't know. Full agreement here. Yeah. That's where I was going with it. And I don't think they have anything, like, unique about them to pull them up any higher than that. I mean, they're all kind of just average looking if they had some more you know, features or looks that would kind of make them stand out. They might get higher than a D for me at least, but they just kind of, you know, they get lost in the pool of chairs, let's just say. They're not bad for the price. They're just low-priced items. Right, so. exactly. Yeah, and, in, and these are like imported products that I don't know how much influence they really have on the actual product itself too because there's a lot of that stuff happening right now from other brands that are kind of like Branch, so... Next up, we've got FlexiSpot. So I think FlexiSpot's an interesting one. This is a brand that we've sold in the past. We no longer do. A lot of the reason we don't sell is because of the fact that their service was awful. And that was coming from us working directly with them, not being an end consumer. I'm a little concerned because of that, because a lot of the stuff I see is still the same. From a product standpoint, the chairs specifically, I wouldn't say that that's their strongest part of their business. I haven't been overly impressed with the product. The Soutine is not... Not good. So I would say the chairs are probably F tier, maybe D tier. Yeah. I mean, the reason that we started working with them is because we liked their standing desk converters. And yeah. I, I still do. And I right. think that that's their bread and butter. I think if you want a good standing desk converter in that $300 range, they're the brand to go to. Yeah. Their electric desks, not great. They're okay. Their chairs aren't good either, in my opinion, unless you're looking at a specific budget. We have two of them here. The Soutine, I think, is terrible. F tier, I would never recommend it. The EC, whatever the other one that we have is, isn't bad if you're looking for an all-mesh chair under $200. If you've got any more money than that, I would never recommend it. So from a pure product standpoint, it's going to be down there. And like Greg said, I had to deal with them a lot because I deal with the financing stuff and they were a nightmare to deal with as a dealer, as someone who was selling their stuff. And so I can't imagine having to deal with them as a customer. And so for me, this is going to be an F tier brand just because they don't have a lot of redeeming value for their products other than their standing desk converters. And I don't like them as a brand having worked with them in the past. A couple of things. Uh, number one, three-year warranty on the product, not great. And then they do have free returns. However, the service side would be a big concern for me just because they weren't exactly very speedy with that. Now, I haven't had to return any products, so I don't know what it's like. But one thing I do want to talk about, and hopefully we can show some of this on the screen, is there is a clear sort of pattern that develops from companies that are doing fake reviews, customer reviews. And if you go onto their Trustpilot page, I did before we jumped into this video, there's something really unique here that you can see right away in the pattern. It's that all of their positive reviews are very glowing and they're referencing a specific person in the business all the time. Mm -hmm. And all of the bad reviews never reference anyone. We've been on Trustpilot for about three or four years now. And if you go through our reviews, we've got over 2,000, so I think we've got a good sample size. It's rare that you see someone's name reference. It's definitely not the norm. And I think when we look at other brands that do the same thing, we're not going to maybe mention them, but yet they are the same. And so this is either a company that does this for companies or there's just a, a clear pattern that's developed when writing those. So I, my assumption, this is my opinion, 
but it's based on looking at the pattern. I think that a lot of those reviews are fake on Trustpilot. So I think with that in mind, they're trying to cover up a lot of the one stars, and that's a major, major concern for me. So I go F tier on this one for all of the reasons Ryan said, plus this one is probably the most glaring to me. Yeah, just from a reputation standpoint, it's, it's not great in my opinion, though. No. F tier. All right, so we've got another one on the floor right away, the All33 brand, Backstrong. I think they just renamed their product, actually. Did they? Yeah. They had to rename it after increasing it 200 bucks, or what? Yeah, so now this chair, so they're, they're really their bread and butter is one product, and it's now $1,000. When we bought that thing, it was $699. I thought it was a stretch at that point from a basically every standpoint, quality of the product, return policy, warranty. I mean, is this not the most overpriced office chair in the world right now? I mean, yes, I think it is. I think, you know, when you look at their policies too, for a thousand dollar chair, the fact that you get five years for the parts and then one year on the foam and the upholstery is bad. There's a $99 return fee if you want to return their chairs. Anything that's around a thousand bucks, you got to have a better policy. The, the kicker for me is that they actually also have a cancellation policy. If you do not cancel your order within one hour, you're getting hit with that $99 restocking fee. So basically, once you hit that order button, you're locked in for 99 bucks, whether you want that chair or whether you don't want that chair. And for a $1,000 chair to have these type of policies and for the chair itself to be so bad... It's tough for me to even put this in F tier because this is a chair that they kind of reference as solving all these medical issues and this and that. And they're very specific about their claims, but they won't share any of their studies. I reached out to them to try to get their studies like we do with a lot of companies like Steelcase Herman Miller. They don't have any studies. And so you're kind of getting a medical advice from this team of chiropractors and no studies to go by Yeah, with horrible policies. Well, where are you going to put these guys? Well, this is this w a weird situation where I would love to be able to add another tier, and it's just the all 33 tier below F because this is a, in a tier of its own. Obviously, we don't have that tier. Maybe for future videos, we'll create an all 33 tier that's below F, but for now, it's going to be all the way over here. <laughs> Robert, you got anything to include? No, it's, it's so uncomfortable. I mean, I don't even... <sighs> You try to recline, but it's like you got to push your legs to get it so that your back isn't cranked out when you're reclining. It's just, I totally agree. It's like you don't want to even give it an F because that would almost bring up some of the other F tier. All right, there it is, F tier. Well, after we've now established the all 33 tier, Herman Miller is going to be quite opposite, I think. <laughs> what do you think? A pretty stark contrast. Yep. About the biggest contrast we're probably ever going to see. This is one where they don't have an EMEA policy that's not like the normal policy. They're pretty much straight across the board good for everybody. I think in the list, the only brand, of course, Noel is now a part of their brand, but seems kind of separate yet on this part. I would be comfortable with their policies being great across the board, putting this S tier. I mean, they've got great return policy. They've got an amazing warranty. I think their service, I know it's hit or miss with the direct-to-consumer stuff, just depending on when you approach them. I think I've seen some complaints that they're maybe not super responsive. But from my experience, because we don't really ask for any favors from them, we always just kind of go through the normal channels. It's been good. So I would say this is an S tier, in my opinion. I know Robert's probably going to rejoice because he's been waiting to say that. Yeah, I mean, I love Herman Miller lineup. I've said in a lot of these chairs for a long time. Love the Aeron. I mean, it's, I love how they can blend some good looks because I think they're just high quality looking chairs. They look really nice in your office, but then also have the functionality to go with it. It's not just, they don't sacrifice one for the other, I don't think. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just really good quality in all the different parts of the products so the only thing that they don't do is that if you get any type of service from them like in, inside delivery or you don't catch them when they have free shipping which is rare if you decide to return it those are things that you wouldn't get back and i know some things outside the high performance seating line don't have the free returns like without the shipping costs associated but for the most part what most people are buying they all qualify so the thing with herman miller is they're kind of the best at everything like if we look at build quality, technology, uniqueness of product, form, function, they've got to be at the top of the list. They have the best warranty in the industry, no exclusions anywhere in the world. They have an amazing return policy. Their customer service hit or miss, yes, it's going to be the only drawback, but it's, this is clearly going to be, for me, the one and only S-tier brand for the moment. From the ones we've seen, I got to notch it above Steelcase for those reasons, and so for me, it's going to be S-tier. And I don't, even love, I don't even love sitting in their products. 
Right. But I only love the embody. And but I can appreciate that. Yeah. So Secret Lab. It's just like back and forth here. This is interesting. So I think that the Secret Lab brand is interesting because they're probably arguably from a racing style gaming chair, the best out there. As far as what we As far reviewed, as product quality, I'd say so. I mean, there's a brand Noble that we've never tried, which people talk about. But from a policy standpoint, they're okay. They've got a 49-day window for you to return. They make you pay return shipping, but they don't have restocking fees, so that's not bad. They have a, just a decent warranty at three years. They've got arguably a little bit of a shady sort of... You it's not arguably. It's, sh- it's shady. Okay. It's if you take a picture posted on social media to promote their product, then you get an additional two years on the warranty. So then it bumps up to five. So with all that in mind, I probably put this brand in like a CD tier. I'm fine putting it in C just because I know that they're loved around the world and the product's pretty good. So just don't love that warranty thing. The one thing that they don't really ever get flack on that I see is them honoring their policies. So while I may not think that they have the best policies, they do honor them. And for the price point, the policies aren't terrible. I just am not a huge fan of the product itself. But again, it is probably the best of its kind, other than maybe one other brand. But we have gotten the Razor chair in here, which is another one we thought would compete with it. And it's just not. not. Yeah. So, I mean, I'd be okay putting this in C tier. And, and the thing, too, about this is like with IKEA being in C tier, just to qualify it. I mean, IKEA's products aren't as good as Secret Lab's products. And so the policies from IKEA are better than Secret Lab. But this is sort of a hodgepodge of everything put together right. to come up with where they rank. So yeah. when you put it like that, it's got to be next to IKEA. Yeah. Yeah, because it's kind of the direct opposite. Right. Not the best policies, but better product. So, Robert, I think that's a good spot. What do you think? Yeah, I think the if it weren't for the Titan, I feel like they'd have to be lower, in my opinion. But the Titan, it makes me think that they're kind of evolving and and they're breaking a little bit from some of the gaming chair problems. Whereas this, I can actually sit and not feel like there's hard bolsters kind of pushing into me. So I like the fact that they are kind of evolving to make it a little more similar to an office chair. I guess we can go C, but I probably would put the actual product more in the D. Okay, C D. D. We'll stick with C. All right, human scale next. Human scale is one of those brands that's kind of tough just because they are definitely trying to be on the same level as Herman Miller, Steelcase, Hayworth, and compete with them. And from a product design standpoint, I can definitely get behind it. They have some unique designs, some really good looking chairs. I don't think that they're quite as nicely built is those really top tier brands. But the one thing that kind of separates them from those brands, in my opinion, is just going to be their policies, just because you're not going to get the same type of coverage on the fabric. They've got a nice 15 year warranty on most of the chair, but then they're going to have some exclusions where you're only going to get five years of coverage, which is not going to be the case with Steelcase if you're not in the EMEA or Herman Miller. And then you're not able to return any human scale chairs, which is the biggest downside of their brand. It is the biggest reason why people do not buy human scale chairs from us, it's a big risk to sink $1,400 into a chair that you cannot return and you're going to be stuck with. And they're unique too. I was just going to say yeah. the same thing. I'll let you roll with it. No, I mean, they're, they're all like really unique in how the, especially like the freedom is like a flagship product. I mean, it's hit or miss for people to love it or hate it. And if you can't return it, that's tough to get people to buy into an expensive product like that. So I think this has got to be <clears throat> for me, our first B tier placing. The brand is definitely significantly better than Secret Lab or Ikea. So this would be like B plus for me, but I can't put it in the same tier as Steelcase. It yeah. just can't be there. Well, their policies don't match. Right. That, and that's the thing. It's good quality. I know they're a little bit noisy, but I, I think that they're good quality chairs. They last. They look amazing. They're beautiful for sure. It is a high-end brand, but it's just they don't have the things that are required to prop it up in that A and definitely the S tier. So I'm right there with you. It's like I want to give it an A because I really do like the products. I, I sit in the Liberty in our conference room all the time, and I really like it, and I'm always thinking, man, I got to bring this to my desk because I really like the chair. They look great. They are a little noisy. That's maybe big downside, but that's not always that big of a deal. It, it can be if you're around a lot of people. But if it weren't for the, some of those policies, I would definitely put this in A, but B feels about right. Just so we're... I, the, the fact that you can't return the chairs makes me think B minus. Like, that's a big red flag, but it's still in the B. All right, neutral posture. 
Neutral Posture is another interesting brand, kind of like Human Skill that we just looked at, where their products can be attractive, their policies aren't great. But one difference is that they do have a much wider gamut of products. Some of them can be A, S tier type quality products, whereas others aren't always so great. So like the Super Poof chair that we have is amazing for big and tall users that want something super cush. The 8000 series chair is beloved by our sales team. They recommend it all the time. The third chair you're seeing, you've never seen in a video because we didn't like it to the point where we removed it from the site. So it's kind of hit or miss with their products and their policies aren't super attractive. Yeah, 10 years on parts, three years on foam and upholstery. They allow returns with restocking fees, which we just follow their policies here at BTOD. So it's not a great policy. You can return it, which is better than not returning it, but it still costs quite a bit of money for the consumer. So I, I don't love that. I would say for all of those reasons, you end up in a situation where it gets confusing. Now you've got human scale and B tier and you've got Ikea secret lab and C tier. I think this falls in between them, but I think Ikea's really got great policies. It props them up. Secret Lab's got a solid product for what the price point is that kind of props them up. And this is the same thing. It's sort of, I would say like B minus, maybe C plus. It just really depends. For me, it's it's right in there. I don't, I don't know. I mean, for me, the gap in product quality from neutral posture to these two is Keeps so them large yeah. that they kind of, it's like human scale. It's a similar situation, except for neutral posture has some products that aren't going to be as good as human scale products. So I, I would put it a little bit lower than human scale, somewhere in the B, B minus range. Yeah, and that's a tough thing too, because you, you can't return human scale, but you can return neutral posture at a cost. But the product is good, and the product's definitely better than the C tier product. So, but yeah. you don't get quite as good of a warranty as human scale. Right. So, yeah, that's a tough. There's one. a lot to unpack there. <laughs> I, mean, I think the fact, that, as you mentioned earlier, that that our sales guys, we have two sales guys that basically won't give up these chairs, like. One time we shot a video back here and I snuck this chair to my desk for a few week, few days and it didn't last long and it was already back at, uh, at Adam's desk there. So that, that proves that the quality is really good. They're really comfortable chairs, but with the policies, it probably brings it back down. So Next up, mm, autonomous. Well, I think I'm finding that this is a really difficult list to, to rank these brands because some of these brands have wide ranging products and it's tough. I would say this one, though, autonomous, maybe not as It's tough. pretty easy. This one's fairly easy. You've got really kind of two tiers of their products, maybe three. They've got five year on their Ergo Chair Plus, which covers the whole chair, two years on their Ergo Chair, and then when you get in their lower rung of chairs, it's just one year for warranty. Uh, they do have free returns on most of their chairs, so that's good, but the quality of the chairs is not great. Comfort-wise, not great. They also don't have a super great reputation. A lot of the comments that you read on places like Reddit are going to be complaining about Autonomous not honoring things like giving you $150 to spend on anything and then not letting you spend it on anything. So the reputation isn't great. And I would say that they probably have one of the worst value to price ratios out of the chairs we've tested because the chair that we have is, I think it's like over $500 now. Yeah. And we always say the same thing. It was pretty good when we bought it for 349 bucks. You could justify the price then. Can't justify the price now. There's just way too many good chairs out there that are better than this. And so from poor policies to a poor product to poor price to value to poor reputation, for me, this is an easy F tier. Wow, he just drops the F tier on it. <laughs> I think he's right on it. I mean, I see, I'm always checking out people's setups and stuff, and I see a lot of these chairs, and I always, like, think, man, you got a great setup, but you got to upgrade that chair because it's, like, not only all the things about uh, some of their shady practices, but it's just not comfortable. So it has to be an F. Yeah, that's tough. I, I think if they didn't have free returns, I'd probably agree. I think the free returns would be boost this a little bit for me, but I'm losing the battle anyways because I've been outvoted, so. F tier, two to one. Continuing our trend of going from F tier to a higher tier brand, we're going F tier straight to Hayworth. This is going to be one of those brands that obviously is going to be in the conversation with Herman Miller, Steelcase, Human Scale, Neutral Posture. From a build quality standpoint, I think it's similar to Steelcase, maybe a touch lower in terms of just overall longevity and build. I do think that their chairs are comfortable, though. My daily driver right now is the Fern chair, recently moved away from the Leap, and I also really love the Zodi. Either one of those two chairs I could use every single day. And Hayworth also has some nice policies. They've got a great warranty. Their one drawback compared to the two bigwigs, 
steel case and Herman Miller, is that they only give you five years of coverage on the fabric, which is a downside. But they do have free returns for 30 days, a little bit longer than steel case is 14 days. And we haven't heard any instances of them charging return shipping fees, which I've read a couple times out there happening, but it doesn't seem to be too common. I'm not sure why that happens. Maybe it's beyond the window. Or yeah, or maybe it's some flexible. outbound shipping charges. Yeah. I mean, for me, this is going to be a, the S tier, A tier conversation. Yeah, I mean, I think their policies are really pretty solid outside the upholstery one. And for the most part, I honestly don't know how much that's going to play a part with this just because they've got like high end pretty much everything. Hayworth has probably, in my opinion, one of the best values with the Soji chair. It's like hard to beat that chair at that price point. And that chair being around 500 bucks still comes with all the same policies. I didn't even think about the Soji. Yeah. So like that comes with all the same policies as a chair that's like 1500 bucks. So it's pretty incredible. I I like to put these guys probably in the A tier. I think they're deserving of it. It's a lesser known brand, even though they're, they're huge. Um, Billion dollar company. Yeah, I've really liked using their products. And like Ryan said, that new fern we have is excellent. So I have no problem putting these guys A tier right behind Steelcase. Yeah, I'm with you on the A. I think it's, I don't think the build quality is where Steelcase is, as you guys have said. It's like there's a little bit more movement in some of the parts. The fabric doesn't quite feel the same as where the Steelcase is. Uh, Comfort wise, though, really good chairs. There's like a lot of different options for different body types or different styles of how you want to sit. So, uh, yeah, I think A is a good spot. Yeah, I'd agree. This is easily an A tier for me. It doesn't quite have the chops to get up there with Herman Miller just from a design build quality standpoint, but certainly I'd put it right there on par with Steelcase. I think it's a great brand. Next brand, we've got Eurotech Seating. This is an interesting brand. This is the brand that we've sold for the longest out of all the brands. This is the reason why we're here. It is. We've got lots of experience with this brand. Absolutely. So this is an import brand that has a wide ranging product selection. From like $200 chairs all the way up to the Ergo Human in Iowa, which sell for over $1,000. The one thing that I will say about Eurotech is that they are a company that even though they sell an import brand, they really, really stand behind their products. Your warranty will always be honored. The return policy isn't always the best because you're going to have restocking fees, but they are reputable. And I will say that they've been a really good company to deal with. And that's not always the case in our industry. From a product standpoint, I think it's hard to kind of rank them because they're so wide ranging. The interesting thing though about their return policy is that you can't assemble the furniture if you were returning it to them. Now, if you're buying it from a reseller like us, then we would accept the returns here. Yeah, that's something I didn't think of. I kind of forgot that they were doing that, and we just took it upon ourselves to return chairs. That part's interesting, but like Ryan said, I mean, we've got chairs in the field that are 17 years old, as old as our company, and still sending parts for free. It's pretty incredible. So they do stand behind their lifetime warranty, which isn't something that I can say is true for a lot of these products. I mean, you can tell when we were talking about some of them, it was three years, five years for parts. I mean, if the chair is good, it's going to last and it's nice to have that warranty backing it up i mean and there's a wide range of of chairs but even like their sort of workhouse four by four products they're not very comfortable but they hold up super well I will say that this is a brand where you're going to get good value no matter what price point you buy in, whether it's the Ergo Human or the Vera or the 4x4, like Greg just mentioned. They all have different price points, but they do all provide good value at those prices. I mean, as I talk my way through it, I feel like this is another uh, B category situation. This brand has to be above IKEA and Secret Lab, in my opinion. I kind of would put it similarly to Neutral Posture. Product quality is kind of in the same ballpark if we are looking at similar price ranges. And so I'd probably be somewhere around B minus with Eurotech. I'm going to go C plus, and that's just because of the return policy. I don't love that part. Talk yeah, maybe I'm giving them too much credit because yeah. we actually accept returns. Yeah. So from a brand brand standpoint, I'm going to put them high C. I put them, I think the product's better than Secret Lab. I think the product's better than Ikea. I think they stand behind their product. They just don't let you return it if you put it together, which is bizarre. But anyways, I'm going C plus on this one. I can't get it up to the human scale neutral posture level. Yeah, I'm right with you guys there. It's uh, like really any of these chairs we have out here, I'd be perfectly comfortable sitting in for my you know, 40 hours a week or more. They don't necessarily have the uh, awe or the wow factor of some of the other brands, um, which, you know, doesn't really bring them up as any higher. But I think uh, I think a low B is where I'd put that. Okay. Well, Eurotech, thank Robert, because he just got you into the B tier. Two Bs and a C. B minus. 
I feel like we have a little deja vu going on here with Office Master just because it gives me kind of similar vibes to Eurotech. Another import brand, but certainly better than most import brands. Super customizable. Very similar policies. The warranty is similar. I believe it's limited lifetime again. Five-year exclusion on the fabric and only returnable because we allow returns. Yeah, the only thing is, is we haven't worked with them as long, but I will say that it hasn't been as good as working with Eurotech because there has been quite a bit of pushback on certain things when it comes to warranty stuff. So Eurotech is better in my opinion. Right. Companies handle warranties two different ways usually. The Eurotech way where they just ask for pictures of the damage and then they fire off parts with very little questions asked, which is the preferred way. Or the way that OM Seating does it, where they need a video, a picture, they want to send a rep out, they want to do a swap, they want to try all these things instead of just doing the quick fix like the customer wants. Saying that out loud, I'm going C tier. Yeah. I was thinking I was going to put this along Eurotech, but I guess it's got to be C+. Robert, what do you think about the products themselves? I think C is about right. I probably would take a Eurotech just a little bit higher than this. So uh, I've actually sat in a firm chair. This is in a firm a good amount. And it's a very comfortable chair, but it has some downsides with some wobbly parts and, you know, just some fit things, which some of that is because they're, they're so customizable that that, you know, causes some fit, you know, uh, little bit of wobble in there. I think C is good. I like and just to chairs, note, this but... isn't a high-end brand. No. This is going to be a mid-tier brand. Yep. So we're going to expect some type of wiggling parts and not super high-end designs. But this is another brand where the value is there in the product. I think that they provide good value for the price that you pay. Just not always the easiest to deal with on warranty issues. And the returns aren't great because you have to return them to us under our standard policy, which is going to cost you a decent chunk of money. So. The thing about Office Master 2 that's a little bit different than Eurotech is that I think they try to position themselves more as like a designer brand. They've got a lot of customization with their product. They've got higher end looking photography. The site's fancy here everything about them like a gajillion fabric screams options. that they're this like more premium brand but when it comes to the actual product i mean they're pretty similar right. so yeah yeah so i think that's a that fair c tier c tier we'll go above ikea so i do think it's going to be right about there i think that's fair so the X Chair brand, and this is a interesting one because I think this is a brand that, in my opinion, is probably in line as far as like quality of product and like the Eurotech OM seating sort of spectrum mid market brand. Uh, but they position themselves not only in price but just the marketing to be sort of your high end Herman Miller steel case alternative. And my issue here is that not only is the product closer to Eurotech and OM seating, but the policies are worse than the mid-tier brands and for that reason it gets tough here so i think the chair we have right now is about a thousand bucks the policies are 15 year warranty with a giant asterisk because it's really five years on foam and upholstery and then they break it down where for the first couple of years they'll cover the shipping after that you pay for the shipping which is kind of unique if you look at the parts that's where it's 15 years on non-moving parts so metal frame, things like that. And this is the same thing here. They'll cover the shipping for two years and then it's up to the customer beyond that. And they've got a $149 return shipping fee, but this is a no hassle turn policy, which seems a bit of like a hassle. I'm going to put this thing probably C tier, maybe D tier. I probably put it C tier. The problem is, is from a product standpoint, we, we have one product but it compared to an OM product like the Affirm or the Truly or even the Yes Chair or compared to the Ergo Human and Iowa, I don't think it's as comfortable. It's not as good of a product in my opinion. The return policy could be argued that it's a little bit better than the other two brands right. because one brand doesn't have one and the other brand kind of does, but the warranties are better for the other brands. And so I, I'd be somewhere in the same ballpark as Eurotech and OM and I'd probably put it right in between OM and Ikea. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think it's better than Branch for sure. So this it, Ikea brand being C tier because of its ridiculous policies is really just kind of throwing everything off for me because it's like, how is this brand with Eurotech and OM? And it's just, the policies are so ridiculous. Which is good. I mean, that's right. consumer first, which is important. So yeah, X chair, I think you're putting it right by OM. Yeah, I'd go I'd go right here. Okay. What do you think, Robert? So what's the price again on this? About uh, a thousand bucks. 969 for that version. I mean, see, that's what kills it for me. Because like looking at the mesh, I know John already got a kind of a good close up, but it's just... To tell me that that's $900 or $1,000 chair mesh, it's just not there. I mean, I'd go more D based on the product. You know, if you guys like it, similar policies to some of the C chairs, then I'm okay with that. 
I would just keep it on that low end of C personally. The one problem I would have with putting it at a D tier is it does have, even though the policies aren't great, they're not great because it's $1,000, but the policies are still better than Autonomous Flexi Spot all 33, right? Yeah, Branch. and I think too, like our thing here is that we don't have their chair with the padded seat or we don't have their all leather version which of course is going to balloon the price, but it's probably more comfortable, yeah. right? I mean, it has to be more comfortable because the mesh seat on that chair is, is pretty awful. I'm, I'm good with it going in the C tier. Yeah, let's put it right here. All right, wrapping up the list. Last, but definitely not going to be least here, is going to be Noel. I'm just looking at And yes, phone. we know <laughs> that. Just on my phone right now. Miller Knoll now <laughs> exists, and they're one. But as Greg said earlier, they still kind of operate separately, and they do have separate policies. For example, the Knoll warranty, you're not going to get the same 12-year warranty as Herman Miller. You're going to have some exclusions, namely the fabric. You're only going to get three years of coverage there. And their return policy isn't as friendly. You're not going to get 30 days. Instead, you get 14 days, and you're going to have to pay return shipping cost. If you want to return it beyond 14 days, you can, but you're going to pay a 15% restocking fee. So some options there, not terrible policy. Policy, but not just not the same as Herman Miller. I think Ryan's right on there with, with the things he said. It knocks it down for me, and I think it knocks it down to a point where it's tough. I mean, that's probably you're probably looking at closer to the human scale than you are the Hayworth, but it's probably better than human scale because you can return it. So it's like I'd probably put it A- minus is where I would put it, and I would assume just knowing Herman Miller, now that they own that brand, this will change, but that's just 100% a guess. So I don't know for sure, but if that does happen, they'll probably bump it to the Herman Miller policies, which are, of course, S tier. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually like the product. We have the, only the regeneration here. We've said at some of their other products it shows, and the quality is there. I would probably maybe give it a notch above human scale just because it feels more solid, and because the policies are going to be better than human scale, neutral posture, and your Eurotech, I'd have to bump it up into another tier. Is it Hayworth and Steelcase? No. Is it Herman Miller? Definitely not. But yeah. it's a very solid brand. Yeah. And I think it's A tier. Yeah, I think they have a really nice style to their chairs. The quality of the materials is nice. So it's not in that Steelcase, Herman Miller range, but not too far behind that. Yeah, I mean, I'd go Herman Miller S, Steelcase A+, Hayworth A, Noel A-, minus would be my personal opinion. There it is. I like the list. Let us know if you agree with what we came up with here in the comments. What's the next list you want to see? Tell us that too. Yeah, we definitely need to know that. <laughs> Thanks for watching.